Hi, my name is Amy Menjarez, and I am here to tell you my story of chronic illness, chronic pain, surviving, hope, and healing. If you are new to me, I have been around for a while on social media, um, but I am new to this whole video and, and um, live chat type style of, uh, of sharing. Um, I do have followers on my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, but I've recently started doing focus groups where I've been sharing my story via um, live chat and uh, YouTube. And um, because I've been getting some followings from that, I've been asked to share my story um, on video. And so I'm really excited to share my story today and um, to and meet a whole bunch of new uh, people this way and to invite you to join us for future focus groups and to join our support groups. Um, my story has to do with chronic pain, chronic illness, and natural healing using essential oils. Um, but I, I encourage you to, to sit down and um, let me share a little bit of, my, of myself with you. So um, in, in, here's my story. My name is, like I said, Amy Menharis. I'm 43. I am a mom of five and a grandma of one. Yes, I am a grandma. But I'm more a mom of six. Sorry, Sam, but, you know, I've raised my granddaughter since day one, uh, so I am more of her mom. So I'm, of my six kids, they've all lived at home. My oldest just moved out last month, and they range from 22 to two years old. As a mom with autoimmune and chronic illness, that's not an easy thing to do. And I couldn't be the mom I wanted to be. I couldn't raise my kids the way I wanted to raise them. Anyone who suffers from chronic illness and autoimmune disease, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And in 2015, I, I laid in the hospital after my heart had stopped for over a minute. And I screamed, that's it. I'm done. It's enough. I can't do this anymore. And I had to make a change. So what prompted me to make this change? So I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to tell you what got me to that point. So I was three years old, I was first diagnosed with chronic kidney disease. And by the time I was eight years old, my, my right kidney had died. It ceased to function. So I grew up with having one kidney and being in constant pain, constant kidney infections, bladder infections. I didn't have a normal childhood, per se. I mean, I got to do all the normal things. We got to go camping and boating. Um, I got to go on family vacations. I went to school. But I was very coddled with my illness. I was sick all the time. Books became my best friends. I stayed inside all the time because I was always sick. I had no immune system, to say the least. I caught everything that went around. I caught it more than once. My freshman year in high school, I missed three months of school because I was sick. And, you know, this stuff it sticks with you when you're a kid. You're always sick. You can't do anything. Your friends stop inviting you to do things. You start thinking you can't do things because you're too sick to do them. I remember when I was in the third grade, I had to wear a, a kind of a necklace, but it had an index card around it because I my teacher had to initial and sign off that I went to the bathroom every two hours because of my kidney problems that I had. That's horrible. That's so embarrassing for an eight-year-old child to have to show that she's going to the bathroom. And that stuff doesn't just go away. I was bullied. I was teased horribly. Glasses, braces, you know, the whole nine yards. I always was in a cast of some kind because I had other problems going on. And we didn't know that it was autoimmune. We didn't know I was going to have scleroderma. That's just another genetic thing. We didn't know all this stuff was going on because you don't test for that stuff when you're children. So it's not until you're an adult that you find out you have all this other stuff happening. So at the time, we just knew I had chronic kidney disease. So, you know, you grow up, and my truth, my life, I didn't think that I was going to be an adult. I really did not believe that I was going to grow up and have kids, and that would be my prayer. I always prayed, just let me grow up. Let me have kids. Let me be able to, to, to get married, to, to have that experience. So when I was first pregnant with my oldest, Nathan, who's 22, you know, they told me that to have him was going to kill me, and 
um, they wanted me to abort him. And I said, no, if that's what's going to happen, then God's going to take me. But no, I'm going to have him. Well, guess what? He's 22 and I'm still here. So it didn't happen. I had another one and another one. Yes, each one of my pregnancies was high risk. Each one of my pregnancies was worse than the last. But I've had five babies. So I've made it through. But over the years, more and more stuff has happened to me, and, it, and I've gotten sicker and sicker as I've gone along. And those of you with autoimmune, you know what I'm talking about. I don't look sick, per se, but I am. I have the invisible illness. Well, not so much anymore. I know I don't have a glove on this hand, but this hand, total gloves, because it's, stuff is starting to actually show up. However, so um, in 2001, after I had my third child, I was... I was going into renal failure again with my other kidney. I was so sick that I found a doctor who said, we've got to take that kidney out, that right kidney that's dead. It's poisoning her body. It's killing her. We have to take it out. And for the first time, I felt fantastic. I had five years of feeling amazing. I didn't get sick. We thought we solved the problem. It was wonderful. I wasn't on medication anymore. I was able to do whatever I wanted. Oh, it was awesome, you guys. It felt great. But then in 2006, someone ran a red light and they hit me head on and I broke my neck in two places. I broke C3 and C5 in my neck and I, I broke it on the steering wheel so when I when he ran the red light and he ran head on to me I hit the steering wheel with my head fractured my neck and that's when my next set of problems really started so six months later I just started not feeling well I didn't feel right I started swelling up I was having blood in my joints I didn't feel right I guess it's the best way to say it I was hurting and I went to the doctor and he started running tests and they ran more tests and they ran more tests and I had to go have x-rays and ultrasounds and blood work and all this stuff done and they finally came back to me and they said well we you have something called fibromyalgia and I had never heard of fibromyalgia and I said okay so they started me on a bunch of medications how many of you guys have all these medications? You get put on pain medication. Then you get put on muscle relaxers. And then you get put on antidepressants because you're depressed. Well, no, no, I'm not depressed. Yeah, yeah, you are. You have a pain disease now. You're depressed. Okay. Well, they're putting you on anxiety medicine. Well, I'm not anxious. Yeah, yeah, you are. You have an anxiety disease. You, you need this medication. Oh, okay. So they're telling you that you have all this stuff wrong with you and that you need all these medications, just stuff that you've never felt before. I didn't feel I was depressed. I didn't feel I was anxious. They put me on sleeping medication. I didn't have problems sleeping. Yeah, yeah, you do. You have a disease that makes it have problems sleeping, so we're going to put you on sleeping medication. So they're putting this stuff in my head. The doctor is telling me I have these things wrong with me. So now I'm up to nine prescriptions, and I'm, I don't even know I had all this stuff wrong with me. And so I have a gallon-sized Ziploc baggie. And for those of you that have been in my focus groups and have been on my pages, you've seen pictures of this gallon-sized Ziploc baggie. This was my life. My life surrounded and revolved around this Ziploc baggie because I had to take this baggie with me everywhere I went. And I had to take these pills everywhere, every day. And I was on a schedule with these pills. And if I missed these pills, I didn't feel good. And I had to take them on time. And these pills were taken more than once a day. And these nine pills were just my basic pills. Because then shortly thereafter, I got diagnosed with lupus. And then I got diagnosed with Raynaud's disease. And But nobody told me that this was leading to even worse stuff. Nobody said that the Raynaud's meant there was worse stuff to come. Oh no, Raynaud's is common. There's no problem with that. They didn't, they didn't warn me what it meant. They just said, stay warm. You just need to stay warm. You just need to take all this medication. They don't tell you all the bad things. Okay, so now three kids, drugged up all the time, and this was my life. My kids grew up taking care of me. They had to do everything. We lived in a two-story house, so I would text them. 
call them, can you give me some iced tea? Hey, can you make me a sandwich? Hey, can you do this? Because I couldn't do it. I was so tired all the time. You guys, you can't do anything. So I got to pick one activity. Now, how many of you with autoimmune or just chronic pain, anything, can do one activity a day? So you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's grocery store day, Monday, shopping day. We go to the grocery store. Then I go home and put the groceries away, and I go to bed, and I stay there for two days because going to the grocery store exhausted me so bad that I didn't move for two days. Then Wednesday came. Now, Wednesday is a day that we do something else, and we do that activity, and I didn't move for two days. That was how my life went for years. My kids, they got used to it. They got used to mama being broken. You know, they called me a T-Rex. That's how I walked. That's how I moved. I woke up in the morning. I opened that nightstand drawer. I took my pills. And it took me an hour to even get up to go to the bathroom. Because that's how long it took me to be able to get up out of bed. An hour before I could move. That's not fair. That's not right. Who wants that life? I didn't want to live. I don't think anybody wants to live when you feel that way. That's not a way to be. We don't like that kind of living. There's got to be a better way. So life went on like this. And then my granddaughter came. And then I got pregnant again. And I had two more kids. And so here I am going on like this. And I got to go off the medication because I got pregnant. And let me tell you guys, that was the best thing that ever happened to me because I went off the medication. Now, I'm going to do a different video at a different time about that because, oh, that was not fun. I mean, in a different video, when I do my opiate withdrawals, that's, let me tell you, that's, that's its whole other thing because that's, that's way different. And um, there, there's, there's hope for that too, though, let me tell you. But the, I went off my medication, and once you get past all that point, I actually started getting my life back during pregnancy and I wanted to be pregnant all the time because I was in remission. Because when you're pregnant, you don't, you're not sick. And a lot of people will tell you that when you're pregnant, you're not sick. Now, I was put on some other drugs when I was pregnant to keep me that way. So I was put on prednisone and I got to go back on some painkillers um, and I was kept on my Fluxerol. So I was on some other things, but I wasn't on those nine prescriptions. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going back on them because... I did find being off of them that I told my doctor, don't put me back on them because I don't want to go back on them. I like having my energy back and I like being fine now. But I'm on other things and I'm going to tell you about that. So I had my two babies. When I was in the hospital, though, with Banana, she's my two-year-old. So it was 2014. I was hospitalized for two months when I was pregnant with Banana because I had a major lupus attack. And I had to go into the hospital when um, two months before she was born. And they had to induce me actually early with her. So she was into NICU because she was a preemie. Um, I had to have a blood transfusion when I was pregnant with her in the hospital. I had a major preeclampsia attack and a lupus attack. And it was when I was in the hospital with Madonna that my mom had to come and move in with us because there was my granddaughter who was um, two and my son who was one. And my husband just couldn't take care of us. So it was the three older ones and the two little ones. So my mom moved in. And my mom was always into the fads and she was always into the next greatest thing that was going to solve your health issues and she had brought these little bottles of oil with her and I thought oh god mom what'd you bring now so she started using these oils and I was like yeah whatever I was too sick to fight her and and just you know let her do whatever so when I came home from the hospital and she stayed for a couple of months because I was still too sick to deal with it um I saw they worked and I thought oh okay you're up to something this time. All right, I'll give you some credit. All right, let's let's see what you got here. And they were working. And I was letting her diffuse them. Now, I didn't let her put anything on us. And I, I would never have taken anything internally. But I, I let her, you know, diffuse these in the air. And I was seeing they were really working. And I thought, okay, let's see what these things can do. So I started researching it. And I let her take me to the store. We went to Vitamin Cottage. We went to Whole Foods. And I had already worked at Whole Foods before. And I, I'm a chef. Um, I, trained, I have a culinary degree. And so I had already knew about, you know, gluten-free and eating healthy. And I've worked at Whole Foods. So I, I knew about healthy stuff. And so I was like, okay, let's start doing this. And I researched it. And so I was using oils. And I was learning all about these things. And 
so I was already incorporating them into our lives when I was getting sicker and sicker without realizing it. Now I'm back on some medications, not all nine, but I'm back on high dose painkillers. I'm back on my muscle relaxers and I'm on a few other ones. And I have a friend who has a doTERRA essential oil party. And she invited me and I didn't even go. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'll order some. Yeah, that's fine. Just I'll throw in an order. So I ordered and I didn't even get a chance to open my box of oils, to be honest with you. Um, and I think when she heard that, she was probably a little shocked. But I went in the hospital. Now, I do not remember pretty much a lot of May or June of 2015. I, I honestly don't remember it. So everything I'm going to tell you now has been told to me So um, after the fact. I was went septic because I was on so much medication. Um, I was on such high doses of, of pain medication and the sleeping stuff, the muscle relaxers that I was on, that I did not know how sick I was. My kidney had stopped working, and it had stopped working for a couple of weeks. Because of the medicine the doctors had me on, I had no idea how sick I had been. Now, I remember I had just had the baby, and she was still a baby, and I had had renal failure. I'd been in the hospital, had blood transfusion. I'd been so septic. They probably should have had been monitoring me a little closer because of how sick I had been. Um, and baby was only a few months old when this had happened. And I hadn't really had a chance to even get well from that. And um, I guess I put myself to bed. And I told my daughter I had the flu. And I hadn't eaten or drinking anything in a week. And my daughter had checked on me. And she said I had blood coming from my nose and my mouth. And my mom had called. And she called my daughter. And she said, where is your mom? And my daughter said she's got the flu. And my mom's in Arizona, and she said something's wrong. I'm getting on a plane, and I'm coming there. Because it's not like Amy to not answer her phone. And my daughter was like, well, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with her. And my daughter was only 18 at the time. And I guess my husband would come in, and he said, I don't know what's wrong with her. She's just she's not, she's not moving. I was told after the fact that I had dropped the baby, and it kept walking and that I had grabbed a water bottle and I was shooting aliens and monsters throughout the house because I was running a 107 degree fever and I was septic and I was dying and nobody even knew it because they were so used to me being sick. They were so used to hearing me say I don't feel good and put myself to bed. They were used to me not leaving my bedroom. They were used to me complaining of pain that for me to put myself to bed there was nothing they didn't think anything of it at all. But the fact that I hadn't had any fluids for a week, I had to drink water, nothing, and I was bleeding. I was so dehydrated that I'm dying and nobody even knows it. So my mom told them to call 911 and they needed to take me to the ER because she knew as a mom that something was wrong with me. So they, they called and they took me in to the emergency room and I, they, told, they were told I was septic and I had blood poisoning. And I had only been there for a few hours, and my heart stopped. And then I died. And they had to revive me. Um, my oldest son was sitting in there and said that he saw the needle go in my heart. It, it had to give me adrenaline. And he had to um, shock me back. And my mom had just gotten to the hospital with my dad, and they were out in the hallway. They'd you know, flown here. And um, they said they saw the, the priest you know, had come and everything. They had encoded me. And um, they told her that, you know, that she had to prepare herself. And But it wasn't my time. I came back after a minute. And um, when I, I woke up in ICU a long time later, I don't know how much time had passed, um, they told me, you know, what had happened. Um, and it's it's... You know, there's a reason that, that I'm back, and it's there's a reason that I'm still here, and it's to share share my story. So, yes, it's it's a very it's very sad and it's traumatic what happened, but it wasn't my time to go. So when I when I came back, I said, okay, so what does this mean? This means that I have to make a change. I I've given I've been given another chance. So what do I need to change? Well, in the hospital, while I was there, healing and getting better. Um, one of their therapists came in and she started using doTERRA essential oils on me. And she started massaging me with doTERRA essential oils. And she was using them on a lot of my feet. And I thought, 
hey, I have two terrace as well as a home. I just got some. And she's like, oh, they're amazing. You need to start using them. So I got out of the hospital. And I had to um, have a nurse come come help me at home because I had to learn how to walk again. And I had to learn how to do a lot of things again because I had had whatever had caused me, you know, my heart to stop, had caused some things to happen in my brain. And um, I, I didn't have control over my right side, which I do now. Yay, it works. Everything's fine. Um, but I had to learn things again. And so... When I was feeling better, my friend Marla told me, she said, that's it, you have to go on this LLV, which is the Lifelong Vitality Supplements. You don't have a choice, you are starting these. And within two weeks of doing these supplements, my life completely changed. And this is why my story is actually a happy story and a story of healing. So now I've been diagnosed with diffuse scleroderma. And as horrible as that is, and if you don't know what that means, that is where your body starts hardening up. So my organs will start hardening up, which includes my heart, my lungs, my kidney, and my skin. Hence the gloves. Um, my kidney is hardening up. That's why it quits working. That's why I have renal failure. We didn't know. I've had four renal failures in the last two years. That's what happened that time. My re my kidney quit working because there's a growth on my kidney and they didn't know what it was. It's scleroderma. It's what's killing my kidney. It's hardening my kidney up, but they didn't know that. They couldn't figure out why my kidney just stopped working. Then I've had problems with my hands. My hands just have been really acting up and have not been working for the last six months to a year. Now remember I got diagnosed with Raynaud's way back in 2009. But nobody told me anything. Nobody was worried about it. They didn't. They they gave me some medicine back then, but that's it. They didn't see anything that it would develop anything that it would get worse. Nothing. I didn't think anything of it. My hands had been progressing and getting way worse, and I didn't know what it was. So yeah, it's a bad bad disease, but it's really really a good thing that I found out because now I know what's wrong with me now I know why I've been sick for years and years and years and I don't need all that medication because I know what's wrong they don't just have to be putting a band-aid on it saying here take this 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 let's just see if that works they're just throwing and seeing what sticks no don't just throw things at me and see what sticks now we know what's wrong with me now let's get to the root of the problem and fix it so instead of throwing all this medicine at me and drugging me up so that I don't know what's wrong with me and I'm going to get sick and go to the hospital to the ER where my heart stops, I'm going on natural supplements. I'm using essential oils, which are plants. And now guess what I can do? I get up in the morning and I can take my kids to the park and I can play with them and I can make them breakfast. And I have a four-year-old, a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and I play with them. We do meetups at the park that I run that we get to go to every week. We do play dates. We do play groups. Mama gets to run all this stuff. I run a support group. I run focus groups. I couldn't have done this two years ago. I never got out of bed. I slept for two days at a time. So it is amazing the little changes that happen. And so my story is one of healing and it doesn't happen overnight. And I'll be releasing little videos like this that talk about my story because it's really hard to jam like 20 years into 15 minutes and have it make like a lot of sense. So it's kind of all over the place. This is like the overview story and I'll go into more detail and like, you know, what are they saying, like, next couple of videos or whatever. But, I mean, as bad as things were, as sick as I am, and I am still sick, there's no cure for my disease. But I know what oils to use. So I take what God gave us, these plants, and I put these oils on my body and in my body, and I let my body heal from the inside out instead of putting chemicals and toxins, which is one of the causes of scleroderma. That's one of the things that causes it to be worse is because your body cannot process toxins. It doesn't know what to do with them. So now I can use the LLV, the Lifelong Vitality Supplements, and I take those and I have energy, and I don't sleep all day, and I can play with my kids, and I can be a mom. And I still hurt, but I don't hurt like I did. I don't need to take 
200 painkillers a day, not that I took that many, but you know what I'm saying, like, I'm not, I'm not going through that, I used to get a prescription, and I'm not kidding you, I got 210 Percocet every two weeks, I'm not kidding, now, Medicaid, ACA, thank you, I get 5 milligram perks, 20 days, I get 4 a day, so I get 112 pills every month, that's it. That's all they'll allow me. So, you know, and yes, and I have one of the worst ones out there disease-wise. So my doctor probably was doing me a favor when a couple years ago I was really, really mad at her because I thought, well, this is stupid. I have a bad disease and you guys are being really mean to me, not giving me the painkillers I need. But, you know, it's probably a good thing. As horrible as it sounds, and bad, you know, on my really bad days, I'm probably going to cry and say this is awful. She should give me what I really need. But... In the long run, I'm never going to get off painkillers. I'm never going to get off any of this stuff because my disease isn't going anywhere. So why not take what God gave us and let's find better natural ways to control my pain, to manage my illness so that I can lead a normal life and I'm not drugged up all the time. So I would love to invite you to join me on my page on Facebook, which is Oil Mama for Life, where I share about essential oils. I also have a support group, which is the Joyful Drop support group, and we're called the Joyful Drop because um, Oil Mama for Life, that is my personal page where I share all about essential oils just for myself, but for the Joyful Drop is a group of women that I'm teamed up with, and because pain includes everybody, and it's not just me, and when I do my focus groups, I open it up to everybody else so we're called the joyful drop because it's opened up to my entire team if you suffer from chronic pain or even acute pain and it's just an injury you are so welcome to join us i, I urge you to send me a message um, on facebook instagram twitter you can email me you can text me but contact me because i am so happy to send you out samples to try join us on, on a support group on a focus group um talk to me because I am all about helping you overcome your pain, overcome your chronic condition by using safe and effective natural solutions um, in, along with your modern medical ways. We are not against medicine in any way. You, I, you heard me say it. I'm not getting off my painkillers anytime soon. I'm using natural ways along with them. So, um, you know, you do them together. If you want off your ways, we do have safe, effective ways to um, get, you know, help you naturally get through withdrawals, naturally get through off your pain stuff, but in no way, shape, or form are we telling you to do that. We work with you to do all this. Um, if you want more information on doTERRA or on myself, and is please um, reach out to me. It's amy at oilmamaforlife.com, um, and my Facebook page is Oil Mama for Life. So thank you for tuning in. I do have more videos that will be coming out, um, and thank you for being a part of my story today. See, be safe and gentle hugs to you. Thank you.